All right, hello, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Festus Challenge Week number eight. This is, of course, the Anvil Division stream, but uh, our last match today will be the last match of the entire season of the Festus Challenge. It will be between the Art of Warfare and the Mad Hatters. Of course, I am Imagine. With me once more is uh, Sir Morty. Welcome back, everybody. Now, we have a quick quick announcement here. Uh, because of the events that happened earlier today and uh, talks of possibly uh, rematch between the Sky Invading Rhinos and the main men for that last gold slot, uh, it has been decided that in, in the end, uh, Merry Men will get a 2-0 victory um, over the Sky Invading Rhinos based on match prior uh, to pause problems. And uh, Red Rhea, one of the... the Basically, brainchild behind the Vestas Challenge says that the admins uh, would like to apologize profusely for how it worked out, and they are talking now uh, to work out what needs to be changed and to avoid this in the future. So that has been uh, settled for now. So the Merry Men will, in fact, take out the victory in the end without a rematch of any sort, which uh, you know may have been a little bit hard for them because you know you you kind of reveal what you've what your strategy is, and you know you give the other team time to think about it so regardless of anything uh that is the final ruling here is that the merry men will end up with a 2-0 victory in that matchup and uh the rules for that sort of stuff will be hashed out a little bit further on so that brings us into our last match of the season uh as it looks like the robin dan shows uh stream just ended or at least that match just ended and it will be between the art of warfare and mad hatters of course the art of warfare has been struggling quite mightily so far in the Festus Challenge, but I will give them props because they have shown up every week and they have fought as hard as they can. Yes, they've done everything they possibly can. And realistically, I can only see it really being bad luck, unfortunately. Yeah, and, and they're a team that uh, has really, I think, that was the first time dipping their toes into really hardcore competitive play. And and I think uh, if we see them next next season, still, uh, you know, for whatever we do, I have a feeling they'll be a lot improved. You know, this will yeah. give them a lot of seasoning, if you will say. Yeah, this is um, definitely throwing them in at the deep end. I mean, it's got to be more they can do, and they'll probably figure that out over time, watching either rewatching streams or just competing in other events. And this was a bit of a. Uh, I think a bit of a shock to begin with. Yeah, and uh, on the other side, Mad Hatters have, of course, have, have themselves a little bit of few struggles too. I I really feel like Mad Hatters was kind of one of the one of the favorites in that division. And, yeah. Uh, and they haven't done all that well. I mean, it was going to be hard, you know, with the Glowater Thralls and the Riders in there, you know, with other teams like the Clamor in there as well, and Overwatch, who's been probably the biggest struggle surprise this season so far um yeah. but the mad hatters i think I, I felt like they should have been one of the top two the top two teams that come out of there i do know that they did have a little bit of an organi organizational trouble in the middle of the season so that probably did not yeah, help they any did. um but they are back here now and they at least hope to finish out the season at four and three and uh, and really challenge for uh, one of those top seeds in the silver playoffs which will be very very important um in, in trying to move on forward yeah, um, I think the gents were predicted to be so high at the minute because of uh, past successes. Um, the gents always used to be a very good and very competitive team, often dominating quite effectively. And as we've seen with many of the competitive teams, it's sort of it's declined. Uh, in other words, it's declined to a mid-level range for which they can either recover from or go down further from, but. We just seen new teams show up, trying new things, or surprising teams show up. Take holy showed up, and we didn't even know they were going to kick as many butts as they did, and they have. So we could see the gents go just struggle this one, and then maybe the next one do better, and the next one after that do better, and the next one after that they'll come through and beat everybody again. So you never know. I fully see the gents still doing a lot of good things. Yeah, and you know, it seems like they have gotten their their feet under them now, and and uh, are are moving to perform a little bit better. So we'll see how they do on in this match to finish off the season. You know, if they can finish off the uh, the year with a with a positive record. Of course, the Arrow Warfare in the meantime really wants this victory uh, to not finish uh, with zero victories in the in the regular season. Uh, 
we are going to be on Battle on Dune, so we might we'll see if we end up with a little bit of a longer range firing going on. Yeah, so let's see what happens. Yep. All right, so we got uh, just about a minute here before we are ready to go. So let's, let's see what there's a squid. Yes, I was looking at that myself. I'm looking forward to this. I'm all, I always like squids. There's I'm a squid. And it, so there's a squid, and there's a lumberjack. Now, do you know what's really hard to hit with a lumberjack? Oh, might it be a, a galleon? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, you know that's a, that's a hard call. It, now, if you um... if you're me, if you're me, if you're me, who's pi who's uh who's gunning on a lumberjack? Yeah, hitting a galleon is probably pretty hard. Yeah, For someone who's like... actually had a little bit of a, uh, <laughs> of more experience with the lumberjack, however, um, a ship that moves around a lot like the squid, probably going to be a little bit harder to take down. Oh, absolutely. This squid's going to be a giant pain in the backside. But uh, we have got carronades on the side of the goldfish, so they can intercept them at close range and certainly give them some trouble. may not have lethal capacity, but they have disabling capacity. Um, I think the biggest enemy... Of a squid, so to speak, is probably going to be a pyramidian of some description. Now, because how they're hard you, to assault. If you take a look at it, this pyramidian has a Hades light flak. Oh. And so if that squid can get close to either of those two ships, they're not going to be able to do anything. Not going to be able to do very much. I mean, I would have made a couple of changes that pyramidian to make that more effective against the squid, really. But uh, if... They can catch you with your hull down and hit you with those flak rounds, then you are a gunner. You are absolutely a gunner. So, it's 6 1 half a dozen the other. Who can get the drop on who first? Yeah, and uh, and this is the second squid I think that we've seen in competitive play. Um, the first one, I believe, in the first very first week, we had uh, Gilder take a squid. Yeah, Gilda took a squid, Damn, and I'm pretty sure the they art... lost pretty horribly. <laughs> well, I think the Art of Warfare took a squid as well on their, one of their first ones. Maybe, maybe I don't. I think I don't quite they remember. did. Oh, I could be going completely mad, and might have just seen Hunter outside. Of Guys, this. it's been like two months, so <laughs> so forgive us for not having that long range of a memory <laughs> in this many games. All right, let's get a quick rundown of ships on the Carbon Crown once again. Hunter's squid. We've got a carronade up front. With a flamethrower on the side and a mine launcher on the back. Pretty standard for a squid there. On the Tasty Cakes, that is uh, Tripoli's ship. We've got Gatling Mortar up front with a carronade and a flare gun on the side. Over on the Gent team, we have the Midnight, or the Midnight, as you, I'd rather call it at the moment. Easy to say. We have Flombo Princess 2 2. We have, as mentioned before, the Hades flak front with side carronade and flare gun, so a long range pyramidian with some close range offensive capability with that carronade. They are also flying against the <laughs> Moonlight, flown by Metsa Wizard card, uh, which is a lumber goldfish with two side carronades. Um, this is long range builds versus very short range builds on yeah, a and quite I, open map. And I think those carronades on the sides of, of the ships are are taken very much to counteract the squid uh, if that squid mm. gets on the side to knock its balloon down. Yeah. Um, we should see quite... I don't know. Quite a lot of maneuvering here as we're already seeing the Red team has just come racing up the side of the map, trying to stay in as much cover as they can and get behind that ship, so which they can launch as an attack from. Now, if and they have uh, they have effectively done so. Ooh, Carbon Crown actually takes a nasty little bounce there. Yeah, it takes a bit of a bounce, but he's not in the worst position. His balloon's still covered by that turret, so he should be okay. Now, the moonlight is for some reason moonlight shadow is for some reason moving up towards it. They are getting some very good hits. Yeah, they got a couple of good lumberjacks. Yeah. Two good lumberjack shots hit there, but the rest will go wild. Yeah. So Carbon Crown avoids that balloon getting knocked out, but does now have to we... be careful against here banging comes... against this ship here. Yeah, but now we got the Tasty Cakes rushing right in while they were distracted, hoping to get them on the back foot, but that's not happened. So now they're going to have to deviate course and try and seek cover themselves. Yeah, Tasty Maybe. Cakes getting taken, uh, getting the balloon taken out and getting absolutely focused here. I think this will be the story of this game is that I believe the two blue ships would really try to focus on the Tasty Cakes. Of course, as I say that, 
The uh, the Lumberjacks just absolutely whaps Carbon Crown in the face. Does get him right in front as his armor oh. had gone down. And oh no, that was a terrible time to lose your armor. Right as you get in front of the light flak shots there. And that almost destroys Carbon Crown. And both of these red ships having a hard time so far. Carbon Crown just not able to get in the position that he wants. So really needed to skirt around uh, behind these two ships. And those side care needs uh, from... Uh, the Midnight even did some work there. Oh, Tasty, the Tasty Cakes. Cakes loses a hull armor against that Lumberjack fire. Now they're trying to grind it against the ground. And there no. he goes. Just flattened straight on the desert floor. Yep, now there is some nice fire uh, damage coming in. A lot of the Midnight is getting put on fire, but this uh, dual... Do decent chem spray, Axel. Those engines have stayed up. The hull isn't too badly affected, but the hull is down. But so is the Carbon Crown, taking a couple of flat hits, but not enough to flatten him just yet. And yeah, I think a lot he's going to take balloon. this. They? Oh, they actually oh, <laughs> shit. bounce well, against the uh, the dune there, and uh, uh, terrain MVP guys, terrain MVP just takes that out immediately. So uh, <laughs> that was a really nice, good deflection there by the Mad Hatters, however. And here we go. We thought that we thought that the gents were going to struggle with long range builds. Um, no, they just completely read into that strategy, and I think that's the best lumberjack shooting I've seen in the challenge so far. I don't think it always hit when it needed to and just and enough shots came down the range just to make the uh <laughs> make the auto off I think. Um this isn't quite useful to me to go and attack just yet. They waved off the paramedium with it and they waved off the go the squid with it a few times. Yeah, I mean that, that was extremely good lumberjack firing. Uh, as I said, hitting Hitting a, a small of a target as a squid that's moving as fast as it can, not an easy thing to do. And so to connect, connect like that on a regular basis um, is going to do you wonders. Uh, that having been said, it seemed like the squid was basically flying straight at the, uh, uh, the, the, gold, the goldfish. So that definitely helps when you're trying to aim that as well. Yeah, you need to be a little bit, um, a little bit quicker with it. Squid, you got to use the speed of that ship. Just zigzag it back and forth as best you can, or even just fly in a diagonal. It's always hard to hit someone that's flying on a diagonal with like a giant mortar like the lumberjack. Now we've got the outer warfare just slowly creeping up through the ribs. Now go squid ahead is the spotter. I uh, laid down. Did he lay down a bit of tar there, or was that just the that was camera just a wigging out? Glitch. Okay, it's just a little bit of a glitch. Um, the minute not much is happening, but Red Rear has. Oh, the, no, moonlight, the Moonlight Shadow is, is turned all sorts of the wrong way. They really think that they're going to be coming up on the side of the, the, the kind of the left side of the map here, or right side, depending on, on where you're looking at it from. Uh, but they're actually coming up the other way, back into the ribs. Well, they might be using that downed engine cowling as just, uh, just as a bit of cover. If they do come up from the Leviathan side, then they can drop behind it and avoid the worst of the short-range fire for the moment. And they do have clear lines of sight back over to the east towards the battleship. Absolutely. And so it could work. Uh, so Tasty Cakes and Carbon Crown just kind of sitting down around the ribs here. Um, but it's not going to do very well for them to just sit around and in, in, uh, in cover like that. I mean, they're the close range ships. They're the ones that have to make a move. Um, you know, the Mad Hatters can really just sit in the position that they are, especially being up 2-0. Yeah, we've been up 2-0. Well. They can just sit where they need to be and lay down quite a lot of long-range fire. Um, I think... The the outer warfare are just trying to figure something out. They know if they try and engage from a long open stretch, they're going to struggle. They know if they try and get past the Leviathan, they're going to struggle because their enemy could just take cover. Now, if the outer warfare turned around now and made a run while the gents are moving, it could have been a lot better. But no, they're just heading back to the yeah, back heading, end of yeah, the map. Yeah, exactly. Exact opposite way. Yeah. As soon as the gents go out in the open, it seems like the outer warfare just turned around and went just to the far side, right in the opposite direction. Yeah, I think I think this is for them uh, to try to actually go all the way around the other side. They want to maybe do it a little bit sneakily, um, mm -hmm. duck down below the curvature of the dunes here. Uh, however, I think if the Mad Hatters were looking out uh, using those spy glasses out on those ships, they should have been able to see at least a carbon crown there. Uh, it's a little um, bit of a long distance, but I think uh, the Carbon Crown was poking on his head. 
for a little bit uh, long enough. Maybe if they didn't, even if they didn't get the spot. This is a nice little uh, tactic here by the order warfare though, uh, trying to use yeah. the uh, the dune curvature against the other team. Um, yeah, and, I, you know it's going to take a while for to circle around though. Yeah, to be honest, I learned that trick off them. I watch Hunter use his squid doing the same trick, and I use it quite often when I'm flying a squid now. Sort of keep low and skirt around behind that dip of the crit, to hit behind that middle crater. Um, but it does leave you with a straight open alleyway back to the ribs, where it seems that the gents are moving closer to those ribs, but the other warfare have split up. What's this? Is the Pyramidian going to act as distraction while the, junk get, while the uh, squid gets in close and ruins somebody's day? But it doesn't seem like it. It seems like uh, the squid's been spotted by the goldfish ang always angling and pointing in their direction. Yeah, fact, once again, it looks like the, the, the carbon crown came between uh, a couple of cloud covers here and, and probably did get a, a look-see of it. Now... What you don't expect, you generally don't expect ships to split up this badly, though. So maybe, maybe this can work out, but they will have to time this extremely well. Uh, is it Tate Cakes? Is he still in cover? Or not in cloud cover anymore. So he'll probably be spotted here. Yeah, he, um, I mean, even if they don't get the spot down, they, they definitely do see. Where yeah, they, they know exactly where they are, and they're going to spot it on the Tasty Cakes. Um, it, the Squid, on the other hand, is still staying low, still skirting around the outside of the map, but they might get caught on the edge of this dust storm and lose a bit of momentum. When that starts killing your engines, you just wish you'd never bothered. Yeah, they're trying to use the cloud cover all the way around. Now the uh, the gens have engaged the Outer Warfare's Pyramidian. Now they must be able to... Uh, they must be able to figure out whether or not the squid's there with them. Yeah, no, well, they do see it. On my map, it shows the squid had gotten spotted. Yeah, on mine, it doesn't, so we might be in cross paths here. That's uh, weird. But I, I swear to God, for a second there, it did when, it, when I opened up the map. Regardless, they should. Unless okay, they're now not the folks, squid is yeah, spotted. Okay, so now. They, they do definitely know where he is. They are getting a nice little flank here, but I think the carbon, yeah, is just a little bit too forward. Flying in by himself, flying yep. straight into the mouth of the beast once more, and now, here come the lumberjack shots. shots. Okay, they're trying to dive to avoid it, but we've got the Hades up the back as well, just hammering them. And right, there goes their hull, yeah, and, uh, and uh, there goes gets... their balloon, and they're just going to face plant straight into the dune again. And will they get oh, yep, no. once again Splat. taken down? Uh, it might have been the midnight actually this time with a I light flak, was, but yeah, I think it was those flat rounds. But man, that was just the worst bounce you could have ever had. Bouncing uphill, especially with that sort of speed, with, the, with such a fragile ship, just ripped his hull in half. Yeah, usually you can get away with a bounce, maybe two, but in the end, uh, you will you will eventually just run into like some clip area, and uh, and uh, yeah, that was a little. That was a little weird. All right. Yeah. Uh, I, weird as in, I'm not sure where the tasty cakes was because he was way, way, way behind. Uh, and um, you get this is the problem when you get split up and try to flank like that. Yeah, it's trying to get that timing exactly right. If one ship's earlier, one ship's too late, then you're dooming one or the other. And now we've got the tasty cakes trying to get back, but he's going to get bogged down in this sandstorm again. I don't think that. The gents are going to follow him in, but the Moonlight Shadow does see them and is trying to beat the snot out of him. Yeah, he gets a couple of nice shots off. Uh, looks like the balloon does, in fact, go down. Uh, and uh, and we'll actually, if I were them, I'd actually maybe have let them, uh, let them fall a little bit further because now they're just sitting in a sandstorm. And, uh, okay, they finally get out of it. Thankfully, mm -hmm. nothing too... Uh, it's really iffy thing to sit in a sandstorm like that because then all of a sudden your engines are gone and you know your guns are gone and you're stuck disabling and now the carbon crown is spotted again and you wouldn't be able yeah. to help them. We'll the see. Carbon if they crown tried to, to go there. out, yeah. flank out the side again with a shorter flanking maneuver this time and just didn't work again. Uh, I don't know what the gents have. Do they have X-ray specs? Because I wouldn't have been able to see him over there, but they have. But the tasty case is moving in again, completely on his own. Um, this is going to be a lot of trouble, I think, for him. He's going to lose his balloon quicker than he can do any real damage. Yeah, balloon already down. Uh, does get the armor down of the moonlight, but not doesn't have yep. marks on the mortars. Carbon copy yeah. now coming on in. 
or sorry, Carbon Crown, but the oh. Tasty Cake just gets absolutely obliterated in the meantime. Now, Carbon Crown is out here by itself. It looks like it will make some magic try to happen, but you're on the blues area of the map. Even if you kill something here, they will be able to respawn yeah. quite closely. Can they even manage to get a few shots off? They do get some uh, shots off onto the balloon, but armor already down. Yeah, uh, I think the carbon they... crown is just thinking F this. We might as well just try and make a good F. Oh, and they got a bang in there on the goldfish, and that usually doesn't go <laughs> the way of the squid. Uh, no, it doesn't normally. Um, they yeah, do, they are the doing crown. some good repairing, however. They are, they are, and it doesn't seem those black shots aren't quite hitting their mark. They are giving the moonlight a, a bit of trouble. It seems, but yep. in the game of who's going to survive longer, it's going to be. Oh, the and they just actually hit the bottom as well as they lost oh. their uh, uh, balloon, and now those shots from the midnight are hitting true, all up into. And now this ram uh, might just finish there it off the there. Uh, and gonna bounce on down. Die on Goomba the stomp. Again. Goomba stomp. Are. Goomba stomp. Yep. Goomba yeah, stomp, and goes. just a butt of that pyramidion finishes off the uh, the squid. So uh, there were like. Uh, I feel like this is how the entire season has gone for the Old Warfare. They're like so close to making something happen, and then they're just not quite there. Yeah. Um, realistically, I think that those short range builds had a lot of progress. With a less experienced lumberjack gunner on the blue team, on the side of the Mad Hatters, then you, you, you would have been okay. You wouldn't be able to come out of the out of the clouds disable ships and just grind them down right inside their arming time but you couldn't as soon as they showed up yeah you were hit after hit after hit after hit and you just couldn't go anywhere just just burst your balloon slammed you into the ground and then had the presence of might to sit on you just to finish it off yeah it's a very good job there by the mad hatters they do finish with i believe a four and three record or yeah i think a four and three record mm -hmm. uh so uh you know they do manage to pull themselves up and i Depending on some like tiebreakers, uh, we'll see where everybody's seated. But basically, the the Mad Hatters, the Sky Maiden Rhinos, and uh, Cake will all go in with a four and three record. So we'll see where all those teams are seated and what they have yeah. to do. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, the Art of Warfare will end up with a winless record in this season, but they do still have a chance to make some noise in the Silver League playoffs. Yeah, we never know. We might see a lot of surprise in Silver League. I think Silver League's going to be where all the fun is, honestly. Uh, oh, it's going to be it's an like... absolute dogfight. God, I mean, I mean, uh, Cake, Sky, Reader, Rhinos, Riders, Mad Hatters, all in the Silver League. Like, that's and only two of them can come out, including Black Flight Squadron, who has looked better and better every week. Uh, you know, pulling out a couple of victories late in the season here. Uh, you can't ever even get rid of uh, Sacrilege. And Muse even might surprise somebody. Never, never mind Overwatch. Like, <laughs> I just named every single hey. team in the Silver Leagues because they're all so good and can really make anything happen. Well, they're all those what we like. What I like are weird teams. You don't quite know what they're going to do. Um, and you're damned if you get it right when they do do it. Yep. So All right. It's gonna be. <laughs> All right, guys. So thank you very much, everyone, for joining us today in this last uh, uh, last week of the Vestas Challenge regular season playoffs. Of course, we are going to be uh, going into our playoffs uh, soon. I think either next week or the week after. I don't quite know the dates. Uh, today, we had uh, the Black Fight Squadron take down Cake in a very exciting match. Merry Men uh, took care of Sky Invading Rhinos to pick, snatch up that second spot. Holy Roman Army absolutely obliterated Sacrilege. And at the end, uh, the Mad Hat took care of business and uh, dealt the art of warfare a loss so that will do it for us here today thank you very much everyone for joining us this entire season and we look forward to seeing you in the playoffs of course we are going to be going back over to rob and dan's channel for our post game discussion you can watch the dual stream over here and you can click on the little link there to actually get taken to their channel so do join us for that where we're going to have be having some end of season discussions going on and uh, we will recount how everything went uh today and in the last month or so so uh for everyone here at festus challenge for all the admins and all the refs who we thank their hard work for i am imagine and he is sir morty morty it was a pleasure having you again Thank you. Thank you for having me. And